you know, I don't know a whole lot about his personal issues. I, I, I do know he had a bad back, and uh, it was always something I had to be cognizant of. You know, you know, me at 400 pounds and Sean at basically 200 and a little bit. Um, but bottom line with Sean, he was a perfectionist. And uh, if things weren't right, he'd let you know. And, and, you know, I'm a perfectionist, and things were 99% you know, right. But, you know, there's always... When you're moving that fast, when you're when you're when you're thinking in front of ten thousand or fifteen thousand people, and, and we were averaging ten, twelve, fifteen thousand people at house shows, John and I, the house business really picked up. Um, my, you know, we we were, and you know, the matches were, you know, were excellent. They weren't just good; they were excellent. And because with my size differential, I, you know, we we could we could make them feel for us. And when we popped it, man, they came. Because they like Sean. Sean was a great champion. Uh, and leading into that SummerSlam match, you had quite a long series of house show matches with Sean. I think that hurt it. We, I think I counted 19. And I told by the time I told Pritchard and Vince that. That's just my opinion. But uh, those matches, you know, where I was coming up on the losing end, I think they hurt the number. And it was, it wasn't a good number. I think we would have had we done some DQs and maybe put me over a couple times. I mean. Who knows what we would have done there. And of course, i got to ask about this because everyone always talks about it uh, because I guess Sean broke kayfabe during that SummerSlam match and actually yelled at you during a match for messages. You know, like I said, he's a perfectionist. and um, There was a spot where he came off the top rope and was going to drop an elbow and I was supposed to move, and I didn't. I forgot. And, hey, he let me know and we went on. But, where would you rank Sean among uh, the top workers you've wrestled, like among the Mudas and the Sting and all that? Wow. You see, when you, when you mention Muda and you mention uh, Anoki, uh, Akiyama, Kobashi, those are pretty good wrestlers. Kobashi's, you know, gosh, Kobashi is limited athletic, but he's real big. But man, he's like a, like a machine. He just goes from one spot to the next and uh, rapidly. And it creates, he knows the Japanese timing, so he can create those big, uh, you know, pops. And, and, uh, and Anoki's Anoki, oh my, oh my God. But I think Flair is, is and should be in that group. Akiyama, Kobashi, Anoki, who else did I say? I was asking if you would put Sean in that group. Yeah, definitely. I was going to, I was just going to say that, uh, you know, I put, I put Sting in that group and I put, uh, Sean probably at the top of that list. I don't know if Sean in his prime, I don't know if there is a better worker. And I, you know, I've kind of flip flopped this and saying that, oh, Mizawa. Mits, probably Mizawa in his prime. Mitsuharu, Miza, Mits, Mitsuharu, Haru, Mizawa in his prime. Because uh, Mizawa, he gained a bunch of weight, started smoking, and, and was chain smoking. When I worked for him and for Noah, he, all day long, every day, until he got in a match, he would smoke a cigarette one after another. And you know what? It still go 20 minutes. It's just incredible. You know, Japanese style, 20 minutes. So I think Sean and him in their prime would probably, you know, and I'm talking about Mizawa's prime probably when he was, you know, in his early 20s, 22, 23, 24, 25.